Hello everybody, I'm Prowl, and today I wanted to go over with you trial chambers, but not just in a simple way. Like there's so many things that have come out about trial chambers, even including very recently with ominous events. And I think once you start adding it all together, it can be really confusing to people that haven't been following this for a while. And I don't want you guys to be lost because it's very easy to be lost in all this. But I think with a good explainer, kind of piecing everything together in order with, you know, fancy drawings and writing and arrows I think it's going to make everything a lot easier so don't worry about what you see here I'll kind of go over it and talk about it as we go but I kind of wanted to take you through it in a step by step like what is the order in which you will interact with the trial chamber what are the rewards and then what are some of the like mechanics behind it all because I think once we piece all this together for you guys it'll make it a lot easier and maybe for some of you will actually make it a lot more exciting than it may seem currently because I was very skeptical about these before up until recently I didn't even want to interact with them because they didn't seem like they had any kind of use they weren't fun they weren't challenging and none of that stuff really appealed to me now my tune has changed i've come to some realizations i want to help you guys come to those realizations too this will be a very informative video maybe a little of opinion here and there but it's really just more the facts i want to give you guys info all right first of all let's start over here with where are trial chambers even located well, this white line I just colored over right there, that's the ground. They're under the ground. You find them underground. There's no above ground indications for them at all. So you can't just happen upon them by like exploring and traveling your world, which is something I think they should do, by the way. But that's beside the point. That's just my preference. You find them underground. They are fairly common. You don't have to travel thousands of blocks to get to one. They're more or less everywhere, right? Like they're pretty common to actually come across. If you're digging like a lot of tunnels underground or something like that, or exploring caves very frequently, you may come across them just in your normal play that way. But if you don't find them randomly, you can find them via a map. Go to a cartographer. You could buy a map from the cartographer. Then when you open it up, we'll take you to the like closest trial chamber. Keep in mind, though, if you want to find another one, you got to buy another map and you got to go kind of far away from that trial chamber and open it up and then hopefully it'll like direct you to another one. So anyways, what do you do when you find the trial chamber? Well, you dig down. Like I said, there's no above ground entrance, so you just got to dig and eventually you're just going to plop right into one, right? Again, doesn't seem very fun. There's no like official entrance or something like that, which I feel like there should be. So you just kind of break into it. Now, the way the trial chambers work is there's lots of different rooms and layouts, kind of like this little like depiction I did right here. You have like rooms halls and different layouts that you're going to come across as you go um and no two trial chambers are the same i feel like i think they're like kind of randomly like pieces that are joined together in various sizes and i think there's some type of like randomness to it now once you go into the trial chamber you're going to find trial spawners and you're going to activate that trial spawner by coming within 14 blocks of it while in survival mode so if you're like poking around looking in creative mode they're not going to activate you have to be in survival mode for them to activate um, you also have to be on easy, normal, or hard. You can't be on peaceful. They won't activate on peaceful either. Now, for every trial spawner, you will have two mobs be able to spawn in or be alive at a time, right? So you can have two at a time and a spawner will spawn in six total. And for every extra player, you add one to the mobs allowed alive and two to the total number of mobs. So two players would give you three mobs allowed to be alive at a time and eight mobs total. So what that means is once it spawns the two, the three, whatever, it cannot spawn more until you kill the ones that it already spawned and then new ones will spawn in. So as you imagine, this can actually scale up kind of crazy, right? Imagine you have 10 players and I don't know what or if there is an upper limit. I didn't see any indication of that, but theoretically, if you have 10 players in there, you can have one spawner spawn in 12 mobs at a time and give you a total of, what is that? Like 24, like 24 mobs. It's pretty crazy. So they do get kind of crazy. And remember, that's per spawner per player. So each room, each chamber will have multiple spawners in it. If this is the chamber right here, you might have a spawner over here. You might have a spawner down here. You might have another one over here. They could be on multiple levels like up or down. So there could be multiple spawners per 
chamber room. Now, once you see the spawners, you can actually tell before you even spawn mobs in what kind of mobs it's even going to spawn. I kind of showed you in this picture down below here that you have in the middle of the spawner, you have four copper blocks on either of the sides. And then in the corners, you have a special block that's going to tell you what type of mob it is it's going to spawn. Maybe it's the new bogged mob. Maybe it's a skeleton. Maybe it's baby zombies. Um, they all have different indicators that kind of let you know what the mob that's coming out is going to be. And once you defeat the waves of mobs that come from the spawner, the six or eight or however many that it is, you will get loot will come out of the spawner and just pops right out the top. And one of those pieces of loot has a chance to be a trial key. And this is a very accurate drawing of the trial key right here. It looks exactly like this. If it looks any different in your game, don't pick it up. It's probably a trick. So once you get this trial key, you can then take that to the vault. You will have various vaults and those vaults are pretty much like special chests that are specific to you, the player. So when you get a trial key, you can go find one of these vaults and click the key on it. You will get better rewards than what the spawner gave you. And the good thing is, is it's like one time looted per player. So if there's three of you that have gotten different trial keys, when you pop your key in, you'll get loot. And then when your buddy pops his key in, he's going to get some loot too. Here's the thing though, as of right now, you only get that loot one time. So once you pop the key in and you get the loot, that's it. Now there's a slight exception to that when it comes to higher level ominous uh, vaults, but we'll go over that a little bit later. So just remember that it's a one-time use type thing. I kind of hope they might change that. I don't think that they're going to, but I feel like they should probably change that to be like, I don't know, maybe once every like six or eight hours or something like that. They want to encourage you to explore around and find more than just the one and just replay that over and over because there's a lot of different designs and experiences you can have in them. But at the same time, who wants to infinitely go out and find a million different of these things if you want to run a lot of them? So I think some type of long term reset would probably be pretty good. But anyways, uh, the vaults one use per player and one of the pieces of loot that you can get in this is going to be an ominous bottle. Yes, an ominous bottle, which there is another way to get the ominous bottle, which is to kill pillager captains. We'll go over that a little bit later, too. But that's another cool way to get this ominous bottle. So when you get this ominous bottle and you drink it, you're going to get the bad omen effect. The bad omen effect you may be familiar with because that's what you get currently by killing a pillager captain. You get a bad omen effect and the way that it works today in Minecraft is you walk into a village and here comes the raid. It starts spawning in almost right away. There's no way to kind of stop it. Once it starts, there's no stopping it, right? Now, and this is a big problem for multiplayer servers or even single player worlds that we may have where you kind of didn't remember or realize that you killed a, a pillager captain and then all of a sudden there's a raid popping in on your villager trading hall or your village that you're working in or whatever. This will prevent those accidental occurrences from happening, which is a really nice change because now the only way to prompt or spawn in a raid is to have drink in the bottle first. But let's go into that now. So you drink the ominous bottle and it gives you the bad omen effect. And now you can spawn in or, or I guess start or begin ominous events. Okay. There is currently two ominous events that can occur in the game. Notice I say there is two current. This may be something they plan on expanding on in the future, which I think would be a great idea. They could add in new ominous events for different things in future patches. So I really like this mechanic. It's really, really cool outside of what it gives us today. But in terms of today, what it gives us is first of all, the ominous chamber. So if you give yourself the bad omen effect and then go into a trial chamber, it changes into a ominous chamber, which essentially will change the like status of the spawners in the vaults inside of the chamber. Now that is going to mean the trial chamber, the trial spawners are going to be harder, which is kind of cool. So when you do that, you walk in, the spawners and the vaults will be like a different color. I think they're kind of like a soul flame color is what I saw. And the spawner mobs are going to be potentially harder. Now they didn't elaborate on this a lot yet, so we'll have to see exactly how it works. I would think maybe they'll spawn in more mobs, but one thing that we definitely do know is two different things. First, we know that mobs that can wear armor will mostly be wearing armor when they spawn in. I'm guessing it has a chance to be like enchanted armor too. So like skeletons, zombies, 
like mobs that can normally have armor equipped on them will have armor equipped on them most of the time that armor will also have armor trim on it but they have already said that you cannot obtain this armor like they're not going to drop this armor for you it's just for decoration now there's another thing that's going to happen there are four new potions added into the game and these potions have a unique effect that we haven't had in a game previously so the four potions that we have you'll see i have listed down here are wind which when you kill a mob it creates a wind burst blowing you back there is weaving which when you kill a mob spider webs pop up around it and other mobs that are affected with the weaving um potion they can just run right through they don't get stuck but you the player can so only non-player entities will not get slowed down if they have the effect but if the player has the effect it doesn't matter the player is still going to get slowed down by it then you have oozing which for most mobs will make it to where when they die two slime will spawn out of that mob when you kill them so like an additional danger that occurs also some slime balls which is kind of cool it might have farm implications in the future yeah and then there is the infested potion and that will give a i think it's five percent chance for um silver fish to spawn per hit that you do so per hit there's a five percent chance for a silverfish to spawn in now these potions can all be crafted as well but during the ominous events what will happen is these potion effects will kind of spawn in on you in the form of a lingering potion so um if you're familiar with lingering potions in minecraft when you toss it down on the ground it kind of has a lingering effect think kind of like the dragon's breath does it kind of leaves this little effect that you can walk into and get hurt same thing these potions will spawn in it'll give this effect to the mobs and you that it hits and then these effects will cause those different things to occur that i said and it won't just be these potions that like pop in you could have other potions pop in on you too prop maybe poison or weakness there's gonna be a variety of different potions that can spawn in on you while you're going through this now we don't know what the scaling up of this is is yet i'm sure there's people testing it right now i imagine that this effect can become harder for something i talk about a little bit later but before we talk about that, the ominous vault. So once you defeat the ominous spawner, you get a ominous key that will give you access to an ominous vault. Now this ominous vault will have better loot in it. It's gonna have things like the heavy core, which you can use to make your mace. The mace has had massive improvements to it in the form of enchantments added to the game, some of which are really cool. They can increase the amount of knockback, I think it is. And um, one of them allows you to like hit and like keep bouncing up in the air based off of your hits. It's, it's some pretty cool stuff. I was not sold on the on the mace before now i think it's pretty cool in a balanced way we'll have to see how it plays out in game but it's got my interest now so you're gonna want the mace you're gonna want the enchants for the mace but there's something else that you get from these vaults and it is the ominous bottles that are a higher level so regular vaults can give you a level one ominous bottle pillager captains can give you a level one ominous bottle but ominous vaults can give you a higher level ominous bottles so that means that you can level up your experience and the difficulty of running these ominous vaults and the higher tier vaults that you run the higher tier loot that you get and the more challenging that those vaults are so i think that is really 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 cool because what minecraft lacks to me is any kind of challenge in pve outside of like fighting the wither out of and out in the open there's no real like like pve challenges this is going to be one of the first ones and I imagine that these ominous events, the chamber will get very hard. But then also there is another thing that you can do with the bad omen effect. And that is summoning raids like you used to do. Now it works a little different. Now you drink the ominous bottle, you get the bad omen effect. When you walk into a village, the, your bad omen effect changes to a raid omen effect. Now that raid omen effect will last for 30 seconds. And after the 30 seconds is up, then the raid comes. So you walk into the village, right? Let's uh, let's make a little village up here. We have a few houses over here. And then here's us, the player X, right? So we're not close enough to the village. The bad omen effect has not changed to raid omen. We walk in. And then once we get right here, 
then the raid omen effect comes into effect, right? So we get the raid omen effect, raid omen. Now, after the 30 seconds, this spot right here is where the raid will be based out of. We can't start the 30 second timer and then run away so the raid doesn't come to the village. It happens from this spot right here, okay? Now, in that 30 seconds time, you can drink yourself a bucket of milk. This bucket happens to be made of milk, but you can kind of see. You drink a bucket of milk, it will, it will stop the effect. The raid won't come. So you have 30 seconds to find some milk and drink it. If you do happen to accidentally spawn in a raid or you realize you forgot something, but it's gonna be pretty hard to accidentally spawn a raid now because you have to drink the ominous potion first before the raid gets spawned in. Now, we mentioned that you can get a tier one through five ominous potion. Well, that will be your way of spawning in a tier one through tier five raid. Higher tier raids, have more waves to them that have more mobs to them, making the raids harder, but giving you more loot for the raids and giving you a better reward at the end of the raid. Most of you should know that when you finish a raid, you get the hero of the village effect. That hero of the village effect gives you discounts for villager trading. This is going to be important because with all of this that we're talking about with raids right now, raid farms no longer work not fully automatic raid farms anyways and not stacked raid farms so if you have a stacked raid farm or a normal raid farm the stacked won't work at all anymore you'll just get one raid and then your raids have to be manually triggered before it used to be you set up a a kill chamber or something for the pillager captains you automatically kill them new raid spawns in automatically you could just chain these raids to keep them occurring over and over again now you have to drink the potion so you have to manually drink that potion you can't make it a splash potion or anything like that you manually drink the potion so now you have to manually spawn in raids so now that like fully AFK raid farms and super overpowered stacked raid farms are now gone, your villager discounts are gonna be a bit more important because you won't have as easy of access to emeralds. I personally don't think it's a huge deal. Some might, I can understand that. Um, if you wanna see more of my opinion on it, check out my video that I did on this already. I'll make sure to link it somewhere up in the top corner of the screen. This hero of the village effect, if you wanna do mass trading is going to be pretty important. Trading discounts got nerfed like six months ago. So so you're going to want to get as many discounts as you can. So you might want to drink that tier five bottle, spawn in the raid, let your raid farm kill it. You don't want to have to kill it yourself. So you still want to have a raid farm, let your raid farm kill it, and then use that to trade with the villagers. And that's that's pretty much how, how it works. Um, my overall opinion on this is it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. I like it as a new thing that we're going to have in Minecraft forever. Um, I like the fact that it can be expanded on with the whole ominous events thing to where we can maybe have more or different ominous events later. Um, maybe they even add more levels of potion later. I don't know. But I like the fact that we we have a reason, a real reason to go to the vaults now. Yes, you can you can mine it out for all the copper. I know a lot of you guys are going to already do that anyways. But now you have a like an actual fun activity to do there. Like you can go and try your luck at these ominous uh, uh, spawners and get the rewards from the ominous vault. And then you have a reason to keep running these ominous vaults because they're gonna give you higher tier ominous potions, which you can then use to spawn in higher tier raids to get more discounts at your villager trading hall. So there's this new cool loop that is being added into the game of things to do that are outside of things that we have to do right now. So I do think this fundamentally changes how many of us may interact with Minecraft in a pretty good way. I'm curious what you think though. Drop me a subscribe here if you enjoyed this video. Click the like button to help the video get seen by more people and comment down below and let me know what do you think about trial chambers? How would you grade them on a scale of say one to 10? I'm gonna say trial chambers are maybe somewhere of around a seven or an eight. They're pretty good. They could be better. They could be expanded on, but overall, I think they're very net positive for the game. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.